Edison visits the Westminster Abbey and amuses himself with the tombstones and inscriptions of the dead whenever he is in a serious mood. He notices that only the dates of birth and death are recorded without anything about the achievement of some men. He is reminded of persons mentioned in heroic poems who have high sounding names given to them for no other reason than that they were knocked on their head. He thinks that incomplete records on the tombstone are a sort of satire upon the departed persons. During of this visit to the abbey, Edison entertained himself with the digging of a grave. He sees pieces of bones mixed up with a kind of fresh moldering earth. The dead bones and skulls of innumerable people lie under the pavement of that ancient cathedral. He considers how artificial distinction of caste and color are leveled up in the graveyard. Men and women, friends and enemies, priests and soldiers are blended together in the same common mass. After surveying the tombs, Edison examines the inscriptions very closely and finds many extravagant epitaphs. Some epitaphs are excessively modest. Some inscriptions are written in Greek and Hebrew. Again, there are some tombs which have no monuments. There are some tombs which are erected to the memory of persons whose bodies are buried elsewhere. Edison is, however, delighted with several modern epitaphs. These have been written with refinement and do honor to the dead. Edison thinks that all inscriptions should be submitted to the perusal of learned men before being put in execution. Epitaphs should be true to the dead. They should represent the characters of the persons concerned faithfully. Sir Cloudlessly Shovel's monument gives Edison great offense. Sir Shovel is represented as a bow instead of a brave, rough English admiral that he was. The Dutch appear to him better than the English in this respect. Edison derives lesson of mortality from the graves. He is filled with melancholy, thought and solemn recollection. He feels greatly enriched by his visit. Every emotion of envy dies in him. He sees the vanity of grieving for those we are soon to follow. He reflects with sorrow and astonishment on the little competitions, factions and debates of mankind. When he sees the dates on the tombs of some that died yesterday and some 600 years ago, he thinks of that great day when we all shall be contemporaries and make our appearances together.